Modern neoclassical economics describes a process in which investors, here you have Rodin, the thinker of investors, decide investment on the basis of a rational process in which they work out the discounted value of future cash flows using appropriate discount rates. It also describes how banks take money from savers and invest it in investment projects using the same rational processes. And it therefore suggests that through these two sets of processes by both investors and banks, we end up, and I hope we're moving on to my next slide, we end up selecting the most favorable projects across the whole of the economy. We discard the projects on the right, which fall below a reasonable hurdle rate. We take the ones on the left. We end up with the highest possible rate of return for society from investment projects. The trouble is that this description of the investment process bears no reality whatsoever to the reality of modern financial markets, which are driven by swings of sentiment, exuberance and then despair, with many financial market participants focused on anticipating what other people believe rather than on the fundamentals of the cash flows of the basic investment projects. As a result, financial prices, such as those of the NASDAQ, go through periods of exuberance, and then despair. The Nasdaq, first of all, valuing at quite absurd values many companies in 2001, which subsequently completely disappeared, and then in 2002, undervaluing uh, many of the eventual survivors of the internet race. Now, these processes are as old as money-based societies. If you look at the tulip mania of 1640s Holland, or the Mississippi Project, which was sponsored by John Law in 1720s France, you can see him there on the right, you get these surges of irrational uh, exuberance. However, some economists have believed that we should see these as not merely wasteful at times, but also useful at other times. Both Joseph Schumpeter and Friedrich Hayek said, yes, there are swings of excessive confidence which lead uh, to waste, but they, leave also, they are also vital to the processes of investment and innovation. So that, for instance, it's undoubtedly true if you look at the railway building boom of 1840s and 50s uh, UK, there was enormous waste. Lots of investors went bankrupt. There were many of these lines which were completely unnecessary, but we were left with a dense network which helped fuel the next stage of the Industrial Revolution. But I want to focus in particular on the irrational exuberance because it's the irrational exuberance that can cause harm and particularly when the swings of irrational exuberance take the form of credit growth as they do in China today with this rap rapid growth of credit financing a huge level of investment. It's where you have credit growth that in the past we've seen the greatest waste. Uh, if you look at what has happened in the Eurozone, in Spain, you have banks lending huge amounts of money to projects which will turn out to be largely wasted, uh, such as this largely unused uh, airport uh, in uh, provincial uh, Spain. And it was Hyman Minsky who described for us how credit booms are self-reinforcing. They drive asset prices which encourage more borrowing and lending and far more than equity booms can create a crisis and instability. Banking becoming essentially a Ponzi scheme. And it's also the case that uh, there's something about banking which creates in credit markets extraordinary swings of exuberance and then sudden swaps. Look at the way the price of bank uh, CDS spreads collapsed right up to early 2007 and then absolutely soared. And that generated first far too much credit to the economy and then a sudden stop to the economy. Does, now, does this cast doubt on the case for a market economy as against a planned economy? Well, overall not. So my question for discussion is how interventionist do governments and regulators need to be so that we focus in particular the banking system as much as possible on useful investment and useful innovation with as little as possible waste and instability. Thank you.